Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today I'm back here at the module because we're going to take a look at the new CS105 DCC system from TCS. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> So as you can see, I already have the system set up and turned on. So let's first take a look at what comes with it, and then I'll show you the setup. So right here, this is the gray box, the CS105 from TCS, as you can see. It comes with this three terminal plug-in terminal strip. You attach your uh, wires to your DCC power bus right here with these two screws. This third terminal here is a common connection or a common ground, uh, reference ground if you will, when you want to connect the uh, system to another uh, booster because you have to have a reference ground between the command station and the booster. So that's what that one is for. If you're just using it as a command station and booster without an additional booster, you don't need to make any connection here. This one right here, there's a two uh, terminal connector and that just pulls right out. All of these disconnect very easily and plug in like that. This particular one is for a programming track connection and it does support full programming in all modes. That's direct mode, paged mode, and register mode. So everything is there for you. You can also do programming on the main. So it's got all of the programming uh, modes and capabilities that you will need. This is the power supply connection. This barrel plug goes to this power supply right here. Uh, this particular one is a 15 volt, five amp power supply. You can also get it as a 12 volt power supply. So it depends whether you're gonna be running HO and larger scale or in scale and smaller, you might want the 12 volt system. Or you can use 12 volt with your HO or double O scale locomotives and everything will run a little bit slower for you. So that's one option that you have there is the type of power supply. Now they do specify that you have to use their own supplied power supplies with it uh, in order to preserve your warranty. So be aware of that. Don't go swapping it out if you need to replace the power supply in the future. Another thing that comes with it here in this little package are two terminators. And those would be uh, installed in one of these LCC ports if you add a booster to it or connect to other LCC devices. But right now, using it as a standalone command station and booster, you don't need to worry about that. Okay, so the system itself, as I said, comes with a five amp power supply. So this unit can put out five amps. And they specify that that is a true continuous five amps up to the full capacity of the system. So you don't have to worry about providing a fan to it or anything else. They say it will operate a full five amps continuous without any problems at all uh, before you need to worry about adding another booster. Other things on here, you can see there are two ports right here. These two ports are RJ45 uh, ports. That means it's got eight wires instead of six. And those are used for LCC and it's marked LCC right here. So that would be for connections to various other LCC accessories and for plugging in hardwired LCC throttles, anything like that. And that's what those two are for. In addition, there are four LEDs on the face here. You can see this yellow LED that's lit. That is a pilot light. The other uh, LEDs are related to the Wi-Fi functions and configuration of the Wi-Fi and also for the LCC system as well. So those are explained in detail in the manual. Plus they've got little cheat sheets printed right here on the surface of the unit so that if you have a question about why is that light blinking, it gives you a little quick heads up notice of what's going on. Okay, something else to look at here on the back. Let me see if I can get to that and turn it around so you can see it. Okay, so here on the back side, you can see we have another port. This is an RJ11 port, which means it's a six wire port. And I'll show you what that's for in just a second. But it's marked as auxiliary, so it's for auxiliary throttle networks. 
Right here is a pilot light when you've got power to the unit. And then this little push button right here, I'm not going to push it, that can be used to turn power on and off and also to configure the Wi-Fi setup. So we'll get into that in a minute. Now, I told you I was going to talk about that auxiliary input. Well, this right here is the NCE network wire connected to the expansion panels here on the layout for connecting my wired throttles. So I can take this and plug it in right here to the back. And in a minute, I'll show you that my NCE throttles will function with this system. So that is one of the neat features. It does allow you to use NCE throttles with the system. You can hook up a number of other things. It also will allow you to use lens throttles with the system. Let's run through the specifications real quick. Okay, so, so what uh, does the system offer? Well, as I said, you can get it with either a 12 volt or a 15 volt power supply. And it is basically a follow through system because they say, Whatever you put in, you're going to get that voltage out. And as you can see right now, I still have my alpha meter, DCC Concepts alpha meter hooked up. Right now, it's putting out 15.12 volts and 0.27 amps is being supplied to all of the uh, lights, the LEDs, the IP digital switch machines, and the various locomotives that are here on the layout. So that's why we're seeing 0.27, 0.28 amps being consumed. Another thing that, um, that they uh, specify is you can have up to 260 locomotives and consists running simultaneously. Now obviously it's going to take several different boosters or additional boosters to provide enough power to operate that many locomotives and consists at the same time. But what that really means is it has the processing power to handle that many commands. Not necessarily that you're going to be able to run 260 locomotives and consist with one 5 amp booster. You can also have up to 300 10 step macros. Now what's a macro? Well let's say that you have a ladder uh, in your yard on your layout that has five turnouts. Now with a macro you can set up a command structure so that by simply giving one command with your throttle, for example, you could have all five of those switch machines throw at the same time or in sequence. And that way it saves you a lot of work. So this has the ability to put in up to 300 10 step macros. Of course, you're going to have to have either an LCC or DCC accessory decoders driving those switch machines in order to do that. But it does give you that capability. And that will work with both DCC and LCC accessories. Now, it does support all 2044 of the NMRA accessory addresses. You've got access to all of the 9,999 or so uh, decoder addresses. So everything that you would expect with any other DCC system is available on this one. As far as throttles, you can control up to four Wi-Fi throttles uh, using the onboard Wi-Fi access point. You can control up to 10, or you can use up to 10 Wi-Fi throttles using an external Wi-Fi access point, such as a home router. You can have 250 throttles uh, on a wired connection like I showed you for NCE through the LCC ports here. In addition, you can have up to 62 throttles uh, such as the NCE or the lens or various other uh, directly wired throttles to the uh, system. So there's a number of different limitations and all of these specifications are given in the manual. So I suggest download the manual from their website and I'll give you that address at the end of the video, and then you can look at all of the specifications directly. As I've been saying, it has a built-in Wi-Fi interface, and you can control four Wi-Fi throttles. Examples would be like the UWT-50 or the UWT-100 that I've reviewed in the past, and we'll take a look at how those operate here in a minute. Now, I did try Y-throttle on my iPhone, and 
I was not able to uh, access this Wi-Fi built into the system. From looking at the, uh, at the manual, it seems to suggest that Y throttle has to go through the JMRI Decoder Pro Y throttle interface. It apparently is not built into the CS105 Wi-Fi interface. And I'll try to confirm that with the folks at TCS uh, before I finish this video. Now, I also said that it supports LCC, so that's Layout Command Control, which basically uh, serves as a parallel accessory network to control accessories and other and communicate with other LCC-based systems. And it takes the load off of your DCC power bus for controlling your accessories. So there are a lot of other things more in depth that have to deal with LCC, but I'm not gonna get into that today because this video would go on forever. Um, it also, can, uh, you can also use Railcom decoders with this, and that means that when you're programming on the main using Railcom, you'll be able to actually read back the CV settings that you've uh, stored in your decoders using programming on the main, which is something you normally can't do with DCC. Now, of course, you do have to have decoders that are compatible with Railcom or support Railcom. Right now, I don't have any, so I was not able to test this feature out. Also, you will be able to do firmware updates to the system uh, using either a Wi-Fi connection or an LCC interface to the system. So, a lot built in here, a lot to cover. I'm not gonna be able to go into even a uh, tip of the iceberg on this. There is so much. So let's go ahead now and take a look at how it operates. Now, as I showed you a minute ago, I did connect in the NCE throttle bus connection here, this cable, uh, that's connected to the fascia panels here on the layout. So, if you look right here, you can see that I have locomotive 4555 accessed, so I can actually operate that locomotive, and it's over there in the background. So I'm actively controlling that locomotive back there in the background. You can see it moving with the passenger train. Even though this is an NCE throttle and a CS105 TCS DCC system, I can use that one. This is the NCE Cab 06, so it would work with this. So if you look here, I'm going to select Locomotive, uh, locomotive 5775, and we'll enter, and so that's that locomotive on my far left. I better stop because I'll run into a closed turnout if I don't. So we're going to reverse that and back it up a bit. So if you have friends that have NCE systems, you could set up a network on your layout as well where they could use their throttles with your CS105 system and the whole system will play fair together. You can actually uh, install one of the wireless connectors or one of the wireless interfaces uh, that are available for NCE and be able to use their wireless system with the CS105. It works very slick. Okay, let's take a look at the wireless Wi-Fi system uh, in operation with their TCS UWT100 Wi-Fi throttle. So let's turn it on. Press 2 to start. And it's already connected to the layout Wi-Fi here. And it's a very straightforward procedure to connect. Layout Wi-Fi is the default name that they use in the system. You can change that at some time in the future so that it distinguishes it from other networks in case you're using this at a show. It has a default password of 12345678. You can change that as well. So I've already got a locomotive selected. It's very easy. All you have to do is hit the little locomotive key here and enter or go down to the locomotive that you want to select 
and hit the select button and it's up and running, 5775. So you can see I'm hitting the horn, actually it should be the whistle. And if I want to, I can just hit this one button here on the left by my thumb to go to 5786, which is the locomotive right there in front of me. So let's hit that one. And let's go back, let's reverse the direction. And you can see how slick it moves, no problem at all. And bring it back forward. So, very slick, works great. And that is the Wi-Fi connection between this throttle and the command station itself. Hit that little red uh, subscribe button. And when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Thanks now. Let me show you another feature here. You may remember that I did a video oh, a few months ago on using the DCC Concepts Cobalt Alpha Central Control Panel. So each one of these controls a turnout on the layout, at least as far as this one right here. These control uh, some lights on the layout. But what I want to show you is this is connected into the NCE throttle bus. So I can actually use the DCC Concepts Alpha Central control panel to control the turnouts here on the layout. Let's look at one of them right here in front. Okay, so this is number seven right here. So if I go to number seven and push that button, this turnout has now thrown. Let's push it back the other way. And it's throwing to give me a straight through orientation. So, very quick and easy way to set up control panels for a small layout like this that you can use with the TCS CS105 DCC system. Now, as I said, you can set up a number of different consist. Uh, TCS has their own consisting method, which is basically an expansion of command station assisted consisting because the consists are stored in the command station, but it has a lot of other additional features that allow you to control things like which functions are going to respond uh, when you blow the horn or the light, turn the lights on, anything like that with your locomotives that are in a consist. So it gets very complex. You can do it on a throttle. You can also connect this system via Wi-Fi to your PC through a router, uh, through your home router, and use Decoder Pro. And there are a lot of functions in Decoder Pro that you can use with this system. So that will take another video in, by itself just to cover. In addition, I will be doing an article uh, for Model Railroader on this system. Probably will not appear until maybe uh, September, October time frame, but it will be coming. Okay, so let's take a look at how we set up a consist with two locomotives that you see right there in front of the uh, camera. So let's get started. So we've got 5786 and 5775. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, bring up the menu, and we're gonna go down to consisting. If I can do that, and hit return. Okay, we're gonna add a loco to a consist. Let me go do it this way, two finger it. Okay. So we're going to start with 5786. Okay, and hit return. And then we're going to add another one. Let's go to number three here. Add, and we'll go down to 5775. Hit return. And then we're going to hit, and so you can see we've got a consist. We've got a star or an asterisk next to 5786. That is the lead locomotive. So if I now hit escape, okay, so now we've uh, gotten back out of the consisting setup menu, and you can see that we've got 5786 shown here as the lead with 5775. Now, let's go ahead, I'm gonna hit the reverse key, and we'll get them going.
Okay, so let's go ahead now and we'll clear this consist out. So I'm going to go back into my consisting menu, go down to number three there and hit the return. And let's um, clear the current consist. And we can say it's done. So now I'm going to switch to 5775. All I have to do is switch by hitting that little button and 5775 should back up by itself, leaving 5786 in there. Then I can move back to 5786 like that and back it up. So that's how quickly you can set up a consist using the, the UWT100. Now I will tell you that this system does not come with the UWT100 or with the uh, UWT50. You have to buy those separately. I recommend that you do get one of these throttles. And they do offer special package deals on the TCSDCC.com website where you can buy the CS105 command station uh, package and either the UWT100 or the UWT50 throttle. So I suggest you take a look at those because you can save some money and get a feeling for the price structure and also any special deals that they are running because I do highly recommend using this. Uh, it's a lot faster and easier, I think, to use the UWT100 uh, for setting up the settings on the command station. It just makes it a lot easier if you can use the menus that are built in here. And those menus, they're easy to access. You just hit this little key right here with the three dashes on it. And that takes you to the menus. So you can go in here and do recalls. You can do ops. And let's take a look. I'll show you what's in ops. You can release a locomotive. You can select yard, yard mode for your throttles. Uh, loco function listings. There's all kinds of features that you can do there. Let's go back one. Uh, recall here allows you to recall previous locomotives that have been used. And we've only used two, 5775 and 5786. So they hold all of these in a locomotive stack, basically, which means a chunk of memory. And I think it said, what, 65? Uh, locomotives or consist in a in the stack. Now what happens when you get past 65? Well, it starts bumping out locomotive addresses that have not been used in a long time. So it's constantly updating the stack depending on how you use it. Okay, let's go back. Uh, we'll go down. We can see operations, consisting. I showed you that. CV programming. How we go in to do programming. So you have an option of mainline, programming track option, or DC address, DCC address, programming, advanced programming. So you've got a number of different options for programming. We can go back here to the programming track. And here you would uh, enter the CV value where that black area is. Let's say we wanted to look at CV2. You would enter that and then hit the return button in order to read. I'm not going to do that because, like I said, it's not set up for I don't have a programming track set up, so you need that. So we'll get out of that. So there's a lot of different uh, things that, that are much easier to use when you're guided through with this. Network options, so a lot of options in here on setting up the network, the Wi-Fi network, the current network, save networks. You can add a network. And like I said, all of this is covered in the manual. Now, let me point out there uh, are two different manuals. There's the quick start guide that comes with the system, and you can download that from their website. They also have an online system that they call their wiki, or their DCC wiki, and it has uh, quite a bit of information in there. I also have an early version of an expanded manual, and I need to check with them and see when that's going to be available, because I do highly recommend it. It goes into a lot more depth than is available in either of these. 
Now you have to remember this system's only been available since I think October is when they started shipping it. So they're still working on producing a lot of the documentation for it. They're still working on a lot of different accessories to go with it. The booster is available right now. They are still working on a lot of the other features though. So those are coming. There are also things that are available from RR circuits. For example, there is a LCC LocoNet interface that allows you to connect uh, the Digitrex LocoNet to the CS105 command station. So there's other things uh, in the menus. The settings uh, menu, you've got your network options, information about this particular throttle, various other settings. Let's take a quick look at those settings. Throttle settings, DCC system settings, roster settings. So there's a lot in there uh, that you know I could waste a whole video covering. Uh, the flashlight, I showed you the flashlight on the LT50. That's these two LEDs right here on the top. And that's enough for now. Okay, so you can see we do have LCC active. We do have the bars here showing you the Wi-Fi connection. You can see the power status of my batteries in my throttle. I still have about half of that left. And the batteries on these seem to last forever. Uh, it, it's amazing how seldom I do have to change out batteries on this throttle. So that was pretty much a whirlwind look at the CS105 system. It really is a great advanced system uh, from TCS. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this little quick look at the TCS CS105 DCC system. This is really, I think, the most advanced DCC system available on the market today. It's going to drive what people are going to be adding to their DCC systems in the future because it's got Railcom, it's got LCC, and it has a ton of other features associated with its Wi-Fi capability. So everybody else, I think, is going to be forced to follow on with what TCS has managed to pack into such a nice little package. So take a look at the TCS website. That's tcsdcc.com. You can download copies of their documentation there. That's their quick start guide and also their more extensive online manual that you can read because it has a lot of information and details that I just wasn't able to cover. If you're interested in doing price comparisons, I suggest going to the Streamline Backshop website and see what it's going for there. I think also that they offer several different packages on the TCS DCC website. So take a look there as well and get an idea. You can do your cost comparisons. I'm not going to go into all of that. That's it for today. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. And we'll see you here next week with another video from the DCC guy. Bye now.